Welcome wrestling fans, welcome to Curtain Jerkin. As always, I'm your host, Jacob Ronnie, reporting for the main event Marks YouTube channel. You can also check me out on Spotify. However you're listening to my voice, I appreciate it. I hope you guys like the new format here, you know, talking about some shit I want to talk about and get into the predictions and then getting to the reviews. Um, you don't got to talk about everything. You just got to talk about the fun things. You got to talk about the things that interest you and then maybe people would be interested in it. All right, that's the theory at least. Let me know somehow. I mean, shit, half of y'all know me. All of you can contact me on JG Pro Wrestling on Twitter or hit me up at Running Down a Dream on Instagram. Or, I mean, send me uh, send me some snail mail. I'll give you my address. Uh, no, I won't. I won't give you my address. I'm fucking around. But let's get to it. We're going to be talking about NXT Battleground Predictions. Have I watched NXT the last few weeks? No. But do I keep up with it a little bit? Yes. But before we get into that, I did want to talk about Mance Warner, the new GCW champion. He won it. Uh, from its vacancy because Blake Christian, who was the GCW World Heavyweight Champion, went to um, Japan to wrestle for the New Japan Best of the Super Juniors Tournament. So GM Matt Cardona stripped him of the title. And I, somehow or another, Mance Warner won it. Mance Warner, I love this guy. He's uh, you know got a bit of a bug house buck, a little uh, Terry Funk in him. But new age, new age enough to uh, to fit the mold of GCW, bleeding all the time, flicking people off. He's a great guy, uh, or an awful guy, but uh, I love watching him work. He wrestled in AEW one time. I think he wrestled John Moxley, uh, and uh, that was kind of it. He seemed to be a no brainer for me to to sign, but you know it didn't seem like it was in the cards, and he stuck with GCW. Um, something else I want to talk about, Liv and Dom. I think these two wrestlers uh, were uh, seen as shitty the past few years. You know, seen as just wrestlers that were on the TV that didn't really have much upside. But they seem to have found themselves here the last few months, kind of sinking their teeth into some good angles since Mania, really. And uh, I think they, yeah, they really found themselves in an Attitude Era-esque storyline that uh, has something to, to grab a hold of, you know. The world champion wants to piss off the former world champion by getting with her man. And her man is just chicken shit enough to, for you to think that he would do it. And, you know, Liv is pretty hot. It's pretty believable that, you know, you would go that route with Liv, given the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, if you were a Dom. And then, you know, Finn Balor, of course, comes out, cock blocks Dom to make sure that... Uh, you know, the Judgment Day doesn't just turn to bits here because Mommy, Rhea, of course, uh, dating Dominic Mysterio, that it, Dominic is, you know, you know, Rhea is Dom's mommy. Is all, everyone's mommy. Everyone loves uh, Rhea here. Um, but she's hurt, so she's gone. So she's going to want that title, but Liv is going to want her man. So what the fuck is going to happen here? This is probably... Uh, I mean, since the bloodline has kind of, kind of gotten diluted a little bit here since Mania, I feel like this is the most compelling storyline in the WWE, and we're going to be talking way more about that when we talk about Class of the Castle, I think next week or something, we're going to be giving our predictions. We're also going to be doing reviews for Battleground, reviews for New Japan Dominion, so I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be busy. Someone who's not going to be busy or seemingly not as busy, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, that fight was postponed. Uh, I don't know why it, it sucks. Uh, I think they said like Tyson had a bit of a health scare, which uh, you know he is in his sixties, and I think that um, you know I don't think Tyson's going to win this fight. I'll just say that I think Jake Paul, the younger guy, is going to knock out Mike Tyson. And then we also have uh, McGregor canceling his press conferences uh, leading up to his fight that he's going to have in about three weeks from now, four weeks from now, um, against uh, Justin Poirier. And, and you know, and we all know that Justin Poirier showed up on Raw like months ago, it feels like forever ago, saying that he was going to uh, fight McGregor, and now that fight might not happen, I don't know, it's International Fight Week, it's a big fight, uh, you know, usually I don't even talk about UFC here, but I feel like this a Conor McGregor fight crosses over into sports entertainment because of his celebrity status, I feel like, 
Um, and that's up in the air. So we're going to be following that. And hopefully this Tyson Paul fight gets, uh, you know, a date set soon because, you know, I'm, I go to run clubs. People are talking about it. People are talking about Tyson and Paul the way they are talking about The Rock coming back. There's something that happens here uh, that I think is uh, culturally significant in a way that we haven't seen since, I would say, you know, a McGregor in UFC or, you know, John Cena in WWE or something like that. Something that's not necessarily culturally relevant, but Jordan Grace. You got to love Jordan Grace coming in in the Rumble earlier this year and now in NXT, the prohibited portal. I love that. Making fun of the forbidden door in AEW. Well, kind of doing the same thing. So, like, making fun of them, trolling them while doing the same thing, kind of making it seem a little cooler than uh, what they are doing. Uh, and only doing a little bit of it now, not doing too much of it. Let's just go right into it. We do have the WWE NXT Women's title match at Battleground in Las Vegas, Nevada at the UFC Apex. So, you know, usually a building design for MMA now going to have professional wrestling Roxanne Perez you know someone we saw come up through Ring of Honor the old Ring of Honor not Tony Khan's Ring of Honor signed to NXT during the pandemic and now is world champion going up against Jordan Grace the powerhouse of of independent wrestling the last 10 years I would say uh well maybe not 10 years exactly but six seven years for sure um TNA champion there's no way that NXT is going to have Roxanne Perez lose. So Roxanne Perez is going to win. How? I don't know. I think they're, it's going to set up something um, with maybe TNA getting a little shine. And I think TNA is going to get shine by having Mishin, a, you know, a former TNA you know, wrestler turned WWE wrestler, uh, is going to go to TNA and lose to Jordan Grace. I think that's how this deal is going to work out because Misha's been, of course, showing up in NXT. She's going to be in the WWE NXT Women's North American title match here. Misha, Fallen Henley, Lash Legend, Sol Roca, Jada Parker, and uh, Kalani Jordan. So I don't think Kalani Jordan's going to win. And I, I just said they got stuff for Misha, so I don't think she's going to win. I think Jada Parker, you can cross her out. I think you can cross out Fallen Henley as well. So you have two ladies there, Sol Roca, Lash Legend, who I think are going to win this mid-card title. Fallen Henley, I think you can put her up in the um, the main the, the title picture. Lash Legend, though, she's got her faction. She's got this looming romance with Trick Williams. So she's got a lot of shit on her plate. Boom, she's crossed off. And now you got Sol Roca, the lady who's got the cool finisher. She's got the cool look going into summertime. I think she's going to hold the title here. The first ever women's North American t champion is going to be Sol Roca. And then we got the NXT Underground match. Uh, Shayna Baszler versus Lola Vice. So three women's matches out of five matches here. NXT, if you like women's wrestling, don't bitch about AEW. Watch NXT. That's what I have to say. And I think that as much as Lola Vice, I mean, she's a former MMA fighter just as well as Shayna Baszler, but she's hot. So I think Lola Vice is going to win that one. We all know who's got the book here, HBK, and he, he knows who to put over as far as women's talent WWE NXT North American title triple threat match I also think you know Shayna Baszler I mean you, you brought her up you bring her down I think she's kind of uh she's in that Natty Nightheart stage where she's kind of she's seen as a threat she can lose as much as you want her to lose and she's still gonna be seen as a threat just like Natalia she's not in that legend stage but definitely that veteran status in the locker room going over to the WWE NXT North American ch title I mean, I just remember WrestleMania weekend where that triple threat match stole the show. Oba Femi champion going up against this time against Joe Coffey and Wes Lee. Two guys who have been around the block for a while, know how to bump and feed with the best of them. And Joe Coffey is a little bit of a base for Wes Lee here, so Oba Femi can catch his breath on the outside. Um, I think this is going to be the best match on the show, hands down. And I think Oba Femi is going to walk away with the title. I don't think you need to do too many title changes because you're going to have, you know, that new North American women's champion uh, win. So I think you can get away with keeping all the titles 
on you know without changing hands here and still having it feel like a big show because you're crowning that North American champion. And I guess that exposes what I think about the WWE NXT Tag Team title match, Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus the OC. I think um, I think the OC are they're good bases, they're good veterans, much like Misha, much like Shayna Baszler. But I think they're there to put over the champions who are going to be just too quick for the veterans. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe the OC could go over to TNA for another cup of coffee, a little title run, uh, and help out this prohibited portal atmosphere that NXT and TNA have. I don't know. Um, there's all kinds of rumors about Triple H maybe having stake and stock or money or power or something in TNA. And uh, time will tell with that. I don't know. Let me know your predictions below. Or let me know somehow. Fly high. I'm out.